I'm Jill, a museum educator. And I'm Ashley, an assistant science manager. And Jill, what do you have here? Ashley, I have hermit crabs. We're gonna talk about houses for hermits. I'd like you to meet my friends. This is Knit, right here. He's Aww. a little purple clawed hermit crab. And this is Alex. He's also a purple clawed hermit crab and they are on the move today. They are, they don't wanna be here. So I'd like to talk about how cool hermit crabs truly are. And we can just look at him here, see, see if Knit will cooperate for us. Knit is hanging out and trying to pinch me. So we wanna talk about their visible body. Yeah. Hermit crabs are arthropods. Arthropods, very cool. So they have a hard shell and legs and, well, this guy has one big claw. And he's kind of purple. Yeah, that's what makes him a purple claw. If we can find his claw, you can actually see it is a actual purple claw, just like his name says. He is very feisty today. Um, oh, I see it. They have these cool antenna that they feel around with them, and then their eyes are really creepy. They stick off their head, oh, just like an alien. <laughs> so why do they need a shell? So they have the front part that we can see. Obviously, you hear that scratchy noise. They have some hard legs. Yeah. But their body, their abdomen, is actually soft. Oh. So they're hard on the front and soft on the back. So to protect them, they actually need the shell. And they carry it around and live in it like a house. Very neat. Now, the cool thing about hermit crabs, unlike turtles and stuff, they can actually move from house to house, kind of like people. Whoa, what? So, hermit crabs, when they grow, um, they come and they shed or molt their outer exoskeleton. Um, and really creepy, they actually eat their exoskeleton from the calcium. Gross. Vitamins and stuff in it, it's kind of gross and cool at the same time. So when they molt and they grow, so they get bigger, they can't fit in the same house No. once you're bigger. So they have to find another house. How do they do that? So hermit crabs will move from shell to shell. If they find a cool one, they can molt and grow. These are some of the other ones we keep with our friends Alex and Knit. These little ones here were actually some previous ones of Alex or excuse me, of knit. He's the little one. These were Knit's old ones. You can see the shell increase in size as he got bigger. That's he so tends nice. to molt a lot more than our friend Alex over here. Um, and he likes to hide under his water dish because he burrows down underneath in the dirt. He'll molt down there and hide to be safe. He'll eat his molt, it's so gross. Um, and then he'll come out and find a new home. So this was the one he picked last time. Now Alex here does the same thing. He's still a purple hermit crab. He, the last time he molted, he went from this shell back to this one and then back. Oh, this used to be his old shell, but he doesn't like it anymore. Um, so another hermit crab we had actually gave that one up. Oh. So Alex saw it as an awesome shell that was free. So he left his home, jumped out, and got a new one. Interesting. Because he likes his cool shell. Then he tried to grow and still found out he liked this other one better and came back to it. So as you see, like hermit crabs, he came back to that one. So he would actually probably, if somebody else was in there or going for it, they might actually fight for a house, just like we fight with bids and stuff like that on houses that we live in. Makes sense. Everybody wants the coolest one. Oh, of course. So they, we give them options in their cages to let them move into. This is probably gonna be the next one if we're looking at sizes. Maybe if Nick grows significantly bigger, he could fit in this one in the future. But let's see how they eat now that we talk about their houses since Ooh. we've got them moving. I'm hungry too. Yeah, let's see if we can get them to take a treat. We like to give our little friends Raisins as treats. Let's see if we can get them to take them. I heard from another friend they were liking lettuce a lot right now, but we'll see if they'll take a raisin. Let's see, they're both like, what's going on? Oh, I see some eyes and some tentacles out, or some little antenna. 
and Tana and Oh, Alex doesn't seem to care. Nope. Maybe we'll put it in front of him. So hermit crabs will normally eat vegetation. Um, we feed ours lettuce and vegetables and sweet potatoes. Well, obviously not raisins today. They don't seem to care about them. But when they do eat, they'll take their claw and help feed themselves to their little mouths is what we're trying to show, but apparently they are not hungry today. He is still on the run, it's so cute. <laughs> um, hermit crabs tend to live at the beach. They burrow down in the sand. If you've ever been to the beach and gone uh, crabbing sometimes, you can find hermit crabs that will come out at night to move around. Now, if they live at the beach, are they terrestrial or aquatic? They are actually terrestrial, but a cool, kind of odd thing is they're terrestrial, but they actually have gills that they breathe with, kind of like a fish. So they're terrestrial, but they have to have salt water to keep their gills wet. Hmm. So it's like a kind of a combination, but they're most spend most of their time on land, but they do like to hang out buried down and substrate, whether it be dirt or sand, that keeps them protected with that hard shell kind of up and their little legs down in and they'll just keep digging down. Interesting. But yeah, I've not, I thought it was very weird they had gills, but they live on land. Right. So it's kind of like a, I don't know, crabby fish? Fishy crab? <laughs> <laughs> but so when we keep hermit crabs here, we actually have to have salt water for them to keep their gills moist and regular water, so they can choose between both of them. Now, when I hang out with the hermit crabs, I tend to notice they use the regular water just to make mud. <laughs> <laughs> and that's actually Knit, our little guy here, his favorite hiding spot is under the regular water dish. Right. And he makes mud because he actually climbs through the dirt, digs down, and knocks the water dish sideways <laughs> all the time. So if you come to the museum and look at our hermit crab, home where they usually are. You can usually see Alex will be out. He might be in his log, but Knit is almost always underneath the water dish. So hermit crabs, because they're pretty cool here, they actually do make really good pets. Um, there is some upkeep for them. Like I said, you have to make sure that you keep their shells, allow them to molt. They have to be able to dig down and stay safe. And they, again, have to have that salt water for their very unusual gills. I know I want a hermit crab as a pet. <laughs> well, if you can't get one, you can definitely come see our friends, Alex, and little Knit here, who likes to jump out and show himself off. Say, hey, Knit. Hey, dude. <laughs> oh. So we'd like to thank you. Once again, I'm Jill, museum educator. And I'm Ashley, the assistant science manager. And thanks for hanging out with Alex and Knit and Houses for Hermit Crabs.